Good morning and welcome to my backgammon channel. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to look at 10 tips on how to get the most out of XG, the quintessential backgammon software. So you might be new to XG or you might have used it for a while but be unfamiliar with its panoply of features. So stick around. We'll start with easy tips and go on to more difficult ones towards the end. So the first tip is game mode. You go into options and here you have the option to use different modes. Now, when you're new to XG, I recommend that you use tutor mode and this will give you instant feedback on whether you're making errors or blunders and allow you to correct those moves as you go along. Alternatively, teaching mode will allow you to play as normal and then show you the analysis after each move is inputted. Tip two, board configuration. So here you can see that white checkers are playing anti-clockwise and this is white's home board. You can change the orientation so white checkers play clockwise. Now it's good if you're new to backgammon to learn how to play the checkers in both directions, both clockwise and anti-clockwise. You don't want to turn up at a tournament and the board is set up and then you're bamboozled before you've even you know, made the opening roll. So get used to playing uh, in both directions using board orientation. Now tip three is leaving notes as you play. So when the moves have been made, they will show in this top left window and you can highlight any of the moves and then click on here, the speech bubble and then add a comment. So here I've already added a comment such as make two points with double two, reply after bar made. And I could add further comments as I go along. And then I could save a match and open this up at a later date and then look back on the comments. And I might notice patterns I'm making and it's a good way to reflect and improve on my game. So tip four, deeper analysis. So to talk about this, we're going to go into File, New, and set up a position. Now, let's just say that Green has won the opening roll and decided to slot. Now, I'm just using the right mouse click to move the green checkers and the left mouse click will move the white checkers. I can also adjust the dice up and down using left to go up and right to go down. So here, if I wanted to know how to play 3-1 as white, I can click on analyze and then position. And that will show me the best move here. Now red means it's a blunder. And here, 226, blunder is a big mistake. Effectively meaning, if we were to play this position 1,000 times, I'm losing 226 more of those games. Now, if we wanted instead to know how green would play the 3-1, we go to Setup, Invert, Active Player, and again, we follow the steps of analyze and position. And here, 13, 10, 6, 5 is correct. But now, because these are only green and they are errors rather than blunders, we might want to have a deeper level of analysis. So by doing that, we highlight them and we click on XX. Now my laptop will crunch away. Incidentally, I use XG on a Mac using crossover. So 
So we'll wait until that has done the crunching. And now with a deeper level of analysis, we can still see that the best move is 13.10.65. Also by hovering on these different plays, we can see the percentage of wins, gammons and backgammons. So with this top play, white wins almost 60% of games, but also would win 19% uh, gammons and just under one percent of bad gammons and the second best move you can see that the the winning rate goes down by one percent okay so now let's look at the next tip tip five which is the met table so if we were playing a match so here we would select match play Let's say it's a match of 11 and white is on 4 and green is on 6. So that would mean white is 7 away from winning and green is 5 away. We might want to know what our winning chances are for the whole match. So we can go into options. No, sorry, we're going to analyze. We're going to match equity table. And we can see here for white, who is currently the trailer, only has four, where green has six. Our winning chances for the whole match are 37.3% currently. Now, if we got gammoned in this game, then... At the next score, the next game, our winning chances for the whole match would drop down to 23.7%. However, if we won a gammon, it would then be an equal. We'll both be on six points and therefore it would be 50% winning chances equally for the whole match. So the match equity table is quite useful, particularly when taking or passing cubes to decide on whether it's better passing and playing the next game for a higher match winning chance than you currently have in the game where the cube is being offered. Now, the next tip, tip six, is take points. Again, we can look at analyze, but let's just go back to the beginning. We go to setup and we clear we reset the position into the starting position. We go to analyze. We go down to cube information. And we can see here the take points. I will click this to show non gammon adjusted. So, for example, in this position, if green were to offer the cube, white would need to have. 18% winning chances in the game to take the cube. Now green being ahead in the score we need a slightly higher percentage of 21% and you can bring up this information at any point within the game because the take points fluctuate. Dead cube means effectively a last roll position. Now, if we were to factor in gammons, we would untick this box and we could see now the other take point would increase. So if green was being offered the cube in a position where green is likely to be gammoned, then the take point would go up to 29%. And for white, it would be 22%, slightly lower because again, white is trailing in the match and can take a little deeper. Okay, tip seven. Also in this window, we can look at gammon value. Now this is particularly important at certain scores. So if we make an adjustment, if a score is 
4 away, 2 away, and white has offered the cube, then green has no gammon value at all because gammons don't matter. If he wins, he wins a match anyhow. Whereas for white, the gammon value is very high because winning a gammon on the two cube would mean he would win the match. So you can see here how at certain scores you should offer the cube because you can kill the gammons of your opponent. Here at this score, gammons are killed when white offers a cube on two. Okay, tip eight. Now we're going to look at what is called dice distribution. So if we move the position around a little bit, Okay, something like this. Now we can go into analyze again and we can go into dice distribution and this will show us all the best rolls and worst rolls for white being on roll. So here we can see that the best possible roll is a double six for white. The next best roll would be a double four and so on and in red we have the worst rolls and now 5-1 here in this position is particularly bad for white and 5-2 is the next worst roll so it's quite good in some holding game positions to bring up dice distribution and identify which moves which rolls play well and which rolls play badly so that is dice distribution next tip racing formulas now if we reset this position actually let's clear it and then let's look at a bear off So here as white, we can decide whether we have a cube here at the score. Again, we can adjust the score to see different cube actions. We click here, we change checker play to double action. We're going to analyze and we click on double action. So here we have a double take. Now we can go into analyze, we can go into race formulas and we can see here that Trice thinks it's a double take, Thorpe no double and Keith a double take. So these are often in disagreement. If you want to read more about what these different counting methods are, then you can just click on the tabs here at the top and it will tell you how to adjust for wasted pips and gaps in the home board. So that was tip nine, racing formula. And tip 10 is play from position. So we can have a look here. Now, if you can't understand why this is a take for green, you can use as the take point 25 percent for a money game which is one in four games so you could play this position out four times to see whether you would win one of them as green and if you did win one of those four games then you would know it's a take and you can do this with any position you could put in any position you like played four times and see whether you would win one of those now to do that you go into setup and you click on play from position now you can play it yourself or you can turn both players to the computer 
you can adjust the level to the highest XG roller plus plus, and then you can watch the computer play. And you can do that four times to see what happens. This is particularly useful if you have a complicated position, such as a prime v prime, to see how the computer plays out the moves as you go along. So there you are, there's 10 tips on how to use XG. I hope you found it useful. If you don't have XG yet, then you should get it, it's marvelous, and you can get a discount if you're a member of the UK BGF or the US BGF. Um, get onto it, join the XG party, start practicing. I hope you found my tips useful. Subscribe if you like my channel, new content every Wednesday. Thank you very much, bye-bye.